Hi, Karen. How are you, bro? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, cool, bro. Cool. Oh, good. Um, yeah, it's really nice to speak to you. Um, so I call you Fast or Brian or? Fast is cool. Oh, okay. I'm Brian, so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm just going to ask a few questions. Um, I have got it on record uh, just for my own sort of use because um, my shorthand's not very great. But um, yeah, so if, okay. I, if um, it shouldn't be too long, but um, yeah, it'd be great to Do catch think, up bro. with. Um, sorry. Do you think? No problem. I got time. So go okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so it's been 20 years since your debut album, "Come Find Yourself." Um, what has been your biggest highlight in that time? I think just the education of being in a band, you know, we were lucky when we got our record deal in 1995, there were still big record labels that, you know, put a lot of money into developing a band's career and <clears throat> getting them out touring and stuff. So we were very fortunate, at least in the first 10 years when we were with EMI to tour the world a couple of times and go to places, you know, we never thought we'd go to like yeah. Australia and Japan. So to be able to go play our music outside of New York City was, you know, to us, that was success to begin with. So here we are 20 years later and we're, we still can go back to many of these places and do shows and people still come out and want to hear our music and kind of forget about the problems that happen and just have a good time for a couple hours. It's a blessing. So we're very, very lucky. And is that is that sort of your, um, what you want to do is just make sure everyone has a good time and, almost just um, forget their problems, really. Is that is that kind of what it's influences you? Yeah. yeah. Everyone, especially nowadays, you know, each year it just seems to get tougher and tougher for, you know, normal people. And <clears throat> for us, it's we've always been a band that, you know, wants our fans to come out and, yeah, forget about the problems, just have a good time for a couple hours. And, you know, 20 years later, it's great because a lot of our fans are growing up, have grown up with us and they're bringing their kids to the shows. And, yeah. yeah it's just, Real, it's a real special thing that we can still play music we wrote when we were in our early 20s. No, I can so, well, yeah, I can well imagine that, yeah. And um, so what's been, um, so what? So you're playing in uh, February, sorry, um, um, a few um, UK and uh, Ireland um, venues. Uh, what venue are you looking forward to most playing? I mean, I think every, it's, you know, if I had to pick a venue that's on this February run, it'd probably be Rock City to, in Nottingham. Yeah. Because, it's just such a great venue, and we play there so many times. I think it'll be our like sixth or seventh time to play there. And, and the, you know, it's just a. I think people, not necessarily people that live in Nottingham, but people that go to that venue know yeah. they're going to get a good show from the band. It's going to sound good. It's you know, it's not too big a room, even though it's got a pretty big capacity. But we always have really great times there, and friends of ours work there and stuff. So it's just like going back to a local pub and doing a gig, so to speak, even though it's a club. But I mean, yeah. every one of the gigs, you know, we're, we look forward to playing shows, you know, in venues that we might not have played before and, um, or playing in places we haven't played for a while. Like the gig, I, I think you're in Southampton, right? Uh, yes. Um, Where yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm based in, um, uh, Southampton. So hopefully going to the engine rooms, um, venue to, uh, come see you guys. I'm pretty sure we've, I'm pretty sure we played there. We must have played there once or twice in the past 20 years, but we always, you know, yeah. the fact that we haven't been back to the engine rooms in a few years, it's always good. You know, we'll walk in and something will make us go, oh, I remember this place. Yeah. I you mean, it's, I so think it's this, changed name yeah. over a couple of times as well. Yeah, um, but we just, you know, we just, as long as there's electricity that works. Yeah. And there's, you know, so we can get our, keep our tequila cold and, stuff and you know that's, that's all we really need the ingredients for a good show for us are electricity and tequila and people wanting to have a good time yeah um yeah and that's um and that's you know that's i think that's the key thing of uh lots of bands you know and uh for you to keep on doing it 20 years on i think that's just um you know certainly um an influence to up and coming bands you know playing now so um well, we're really lucky to be able to do it you know a lot of bands especially bands starting nowadays yeah. It's just so much harder for them to reach a large audience, you know. We you know, play for people that aren't just in you know, where they live. And no, of course. So we've been we've been really lucky to be able to go play in, you know, a bunch of different, you know, countries around the world. So Yeah. Very cool. Um, so you guys done a lot of festivals uh this year, one being um Port of Summer Show. 
Um, what has been your favourite? Yeah, that was to, an interesting um, one. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I think we did. It was a bit cold. Um, yeah. But it was, you know, it was a bit rainy and cold, but that's festivals for you, so... Yeah, we we enjoyed it. It was a good time. We had a we had a day or two there, so it was cool. Oh, nice. And um, are you are you uh, thinking of doing many more festivals next year? Um, We're always, you know, if, if they ask us to play, we'll play them. Yeah. So it hasn't um, really been a summer. It hasn't really been a summer in twenty years that we haven't done some festivals. So. Yeah, and do you find it a different vibe um, that it gives from playing in front of? Um, Almost people that may have not heard of you guys, or you know, um, possibly they just walked past the stage and they, you know, do you find that quite trying to get new people to listen to your music even 20 years on? Do you find do you find that sort of more? Um, do you like that? Do you prefer that um, almost? I think we definitely enjoy you know trying to win people over that might not know the band's music apart from maybe Scooby Snacks or yeah. one of the other songs, but. Yeah, I mean, to us, it's the same show as we would do in a small venue. You know, it's just in a much larger outdoor place. And, you know, to be able to play for people that haven't heard the music, that's a great, you know, great exposure for bands. And that's really where new bands are going to get their fans or yeah. playing on these big festival stages and stuff. So, you know, for us, we've done some amazing festivals like Glastonbury in 99 was amazing and really yeah Fiat Park is great and that festival Roskilde Day in Denmark was awesome and Lowlands in Holland so I mean we've got so many great memories of playing some awesome yeah festivals in front of lots of people and that's the that's the best thing is you just have a very loud sound system that's projecting your music so who knows you know people miles away can hear it and go what is that I like it that's great yeah, and I think it's different to indoor sounds as well. Almost, you get a, yeah, well, you almost sort of fans. So yeah, and you know they're the best fans ever. Yeah, but, you know, being a fan of music as well. I remember um, we were all staying in London years ago when that Live Eight was happening in 2008, I guess. And okay, Huey and I woke up and we were having coffee out on the little balcony of this apartment we rented. We could hear Pink Floyd sound checking. Oh right, no way. <laughs> And it was like eight, you know, miles, you know, not miles away, but they were on the other side of yeah. Hyde Park, and we were sort of close to Paddington, but we could actually hear the music they were playing. And it just, as music fans, we got super excited. And so I can figure it's kind of a similar feeling for people when they're hearing bands playing. You know, if you're at one stage and then you hear your band you want to see playing on another stage, you want to get over there and hear them as soon as possible. So no, of course, yeah. yeah. So we are of the people, you know what I mean. We're and I think all all bands have got their own favorite bands, and you know all bands become starstruck when they go to festivals, you know. And I think that's the you know the good thing about festivals really is just um, checking out new bands and obviously seeing your favorite ones as well. So, that was uh, a big one for us. Pink yeah. Floyd obviously is on another level. I don't I don't really get starstruck over anyone. Just I consider everybody to be the same, you know. Yeah. So. I um, but Pink Floyd, it was just because it was the original lineup. It was just it was yeah, huge. Awesome. Yeah, and they only played like four or five songs, but still, it was. It's once in a it, lifetime opportunity, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So would there, yeah. So would there be new music anytime soon? I know. I think it's been about uh six years since you released your last studio been a while. album. I mean, it just takes us time, <laughs> you know. I think. The second record that came out, we we didn't rush it, but we were so eager to release the second record, 100% Colombian, that all we did when we got off tour from promoting Find Yourself was get right in the studio and writing and recording. And, yeah. and the, the, every record after that, we kind of took our time because we realized that we weren't living life. All we were doing was being on tour and promoting and doing interviews and doing shows, which is what yeah. we were born to do. But we realized we're not really experiencing life enough to come up with great, good ideas for songs, you know, whether it's musically or lyrically. So no, of course, we to take a time. And as we've gotten older, you know, now we've got families and children and stuff. So it's, you know, we've got to be daddies as well as being rock and rollers. So. Yeah. But I think, yeah, we're definitely, we're, we're actually working on, we've been recording some stuff for an album that I can't really get into what type of album yeah. it is. It's, it's definitely a new FLC record, and we think the fans will like it. Um, and for the fans that liked our 
third record, Mimosa, which was sort of like alternate versions and cover versions, I think they'll really like what we're working on now. So. Oh, okay. So it's it's almost sort of like going back to your roots and going back to your first, first sort of my yeah, album sort just, of thing, yeah. We, we just got in the studio, started record, messing around, playing, and, you know, one thing led to another, and we came up with a good idea for an album because we know yeah. the fans are hungry, and we greatly respect and thank them for wanting us to do a new record as opposed to just wanting to hear the first record over and over again. Um, so, yeah, we're excited to get some new music out sometime next year, end of the summer, hopefully, in the fall, maybe. So, okay, yeah. good. No, I look forward to that, um, hopefully, uh, an announcement soon. And out of the six studio albums, which one is your favorite? I know mean, it's quite a tough question, but... It's always, that's like the baby question. It's like, which kid of yours is your favorite? You know, and it kind of, <laughs> it depends on the day, really. I yeah. Mean, Confine Yourself is a, is a great record for us because it was our first album. We sort of had our whole lives leading up to, you know, that record, you know, whether we were in other bands and just our little journey to where Huey and I finally met when we were in our early 20s and, you know, took all our influences and the influences of living in New York to make that record. It was, yeah. you know, really special it was just amazing that people in the UK and in Europe and in Australia, all over the world, wanted to hear it. So it was it was pretty awesome to be able to put that out. I mean, the second record, 100% Colombian, is a great record because we really got to spend time in a studio and learn yeah. to like kind of master our sound. You know, it was sort of a happy accident the first record. So from that point on, and then the formula kind of stuck where we. You know, we tried working with other producers and other people, and it just, they took the, they just didn't, they changed our sound, you know, and it, to us, it didn't make it better. It has to feel rough. It has to sound, you know, nasty, but at the same time, yeah. have like a good quality sound. So, well, that's the sound it, yourself, it, really, doesn't it, really, um, for the fans? And it just, it almost, yeah. Has, yeah. Important. We're not like Madonna, so we can't just get with the times. We always, people know <laughs> what to expect when they hear our music, and I think that's what they like about our band. So we're not going to change the formula, but we always try to expand on it a bit. Uh, a bit. So, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, it's, it's hard to have a favorite record. It's more like I have favorite songs on certain records, you know, yeah. and they change, they change all the time. So, no, I can't imagine that. And um, what has been your funniest moment on tour? I know there might have been a few uh, over the years, but um, is there anything that was sort of like um, really points out in your mind? Or I mean, there's been countless great times. Um, yeah. As far as shows, you know, one that um, wasn't really the best experience, but was absolutely hysterical, very much like Spinal Tap, you know, that movie Spinal Tap. Oh, okay, um, yeah. If you haven't seen that movie, you got to watch it because it is, <laughs> so true life of what it's like being in a touring band. It's just yeah. Everything no. happens. Final Tap is funny, where in real life it's not funny. But we we tend to laugh at those things all the time. But we did a show somewhere in Eastern Europe, and it was like <clears throat> the time of year it was. There was like they're known for getting the, these bug infestations. Yeah. So we're on stage, and it's just the sun's just going down, and there's all these bugs, like nasty bugs that are mating, real little nasty bugs, and there's millions of them. They're just everywhere, and they're really annoying. Yeah. And as halfway through the show, as it got dark, all the lights came on above us, and all these bugs would just go up into the light, obviously get burned, and then just fall oh, nice. on stage. <laughs> so for the last half of the show, for a good 20 minutes, we had, and I'm not talking about like a few bugs, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of bugs just Jesus. falling on us, biting <laughs> us, falling on us all over the equipment. Yeah. And I remember our roadie at the time was literally, while we're playing the song, he's running around to each of us just spraying us with bug spray. Oh, nice. <laughs> and yeah. so it was just, you know, those types of things happen. It felt like it was like some end of the world religious nonsense, but it yeah. was. It was really, it was one we'll, we'll never forget. <laughs> I hope that it doesn't happen again, because I was finding bugs in my keyboards, you know, weeks later. Oh, no. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's almost, mm. uh, if you can't, um, if, you, if you can't laugh about it, you would either cry when you sort of, <laughs> so, But getting uh, sprayed by the bug spray during the show was pretty hysterical. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. It's a shame no one has any footage of it, because it was pretty, 
Oh, pretty no. crazy. Yeah, I would have been um, funny. And so you play a number of instruments. Um, which one do you prefer playing, and why? I mean, I love playing the keyboards. Obviously, that was my first instrument. Was playing handbells in church, and then the trumpet, and you know, I got into synthesizers in the '80s, and got into samplers. So I yeah. spent the majority of time messing around with keyboards and samplers and stuff. And it's just fun being in the studio, being able to you know mess around with all these toys. Um, I do love playing bass guitar live because yeah. obviously, when you have a good sound system, and you can really <laughs> feel that bass there's there's nothing really better than that but if you were to ask my parents or my family they'd probably say oh we love it when he plays the trumpet oh really <laughs> there's something about the trumpet here we always like the trumpet and when he realized i used to be a trumpet player he's like yo you gotta yeah. play trumpet in this band and i was like i haven't played trumpet in 15 years but almost gives a scar to it doesn't it like scar rock when um yeah people play I mean, um i mean soul there's so many different yeah. types music that have horn horn players in it and yeah i think it, again it makes or it kind of helps make our music real you know when you're especially when you're writing a lot of music with samplers and synthesizing keyboards and stuff you know you turn it on you press play but with a or you press the keys but with a trumpet you actually it's air you know it's human interaction to make it work no of course yeah kind of cool so I do love that. I mean, I, I always love messing around with instruments. I I realized when I was young, it's like I, I'm I'd much rather learn to be good at a bunch of different instruments than be like amazing at one instrument. You know, like yeah, and I think really, that's quite a refreshing view on, on music. Really. Yeah, I mean, here he's an amazing guitar player, and he's a good you know good keyboard player if he wants to be, and a good yeah. bass player if he wants to be. But he is an amazing guitar player. And, Frank is sort of like me in the sense where he's such an amazing drummer, but yeah. also is a, is a good keyboard player and stuff. So that was always my thing. Oh, nice. never, the whole thing of practice makes perfect. I just got bored of practicing so much. So when I would start getting bored, I'd just move on to another instrument. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm uh, still always learning. So. Yeah, just one last question. Um, um, so thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. No problem. Um, no problem. How did it... See, how did it feel to see the term Scooby that snacks in the Oxford English Dictionary this year? Um, would you say? Oh, right, that was great. We got. Yeah. To... What was the question? Um, Scooby snacks. I think it's in the Oxford English Dictionary. Yeah. Um, so obviously they it was your in... your song. <laughs> yeah, they got in touch with us. Um, that you know, it must have been January, February to say, oh, we want to put the phrase Scooby snack in. Yeah. The dictionary and we need to get the proper lyrics for the song which then Huey and I went back and forth about what the actual chorus lyrics are yeah <laughs> because it, you know when they're going to quote it in the dictionary you want to get it right and no, I don't think good. we ended up doing it right because it was like running around Robin Banks all whacked oh, really? off off of Scooby Snacks <laughs> and at the start they, they did it differently and it was kind of a slang thing, but yeah, it was. I mean, how crazy is that that we're actually in the dictionary? No, that is. Um, I think that's you know to show how far you've come in twenty years. I think that's. Um, I wonder if they mention. I wonder if they mentioned Scooby Doo though, because obviously that's a yeah big part of where we got it from. Is it mentioned in there as well? Scooby Doo. Um. That was always what they. That was always what they gave to yeah. Scooby, and he'd go Scooby crazy for the mystery and. Yeah. Our friend in the security guard in the nightclubs we worked at, he always, all these security guards would work the hip hop night, the pop daddy nights when he was promoting for Bad Boy Entertainment back in the early 90s. And yeah. security guards were always nervous because the crowd that came to these hip hop parties were, you know, some heavy dudes. And a lot of times they'd bring weapons in. So these security guards would always be nervous. And this one guy would always go around to all the security guards going, oh, do you want a Scooby snack? <laughs> Which were Valiums. He'd just get all the security guards Valiums. Oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, probably not the best idea, but <laughs> at the same time, it made him mellow. Yeah, <laughs> like a code name. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah, so I think that's uh, that's all really um, fast. Um, I really appreciate your time. Um, that's great. So um, hopefully yeah. I'll get this um, published over the weekend um, for you guys. And, well, good. Um, if, you play, if you post it to or you know when you do social stuff put it to us on twitter and yeah no Facebook, whatever and we'll definitely yeah. link and retweet and do all that no i really appreciate that okay that's cool all bro. Right. thank you so thanks much very much for your time, time and have um have a great weekend, yeah have a great weekend
Thank you, my man. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Bye.